Today, I am honored to have Irene Vuveludi. I'm going to let the, the girls tell you their last names because <laughs> they're a little bit hard to pronounce. Vuva, what did you tell me? Litas? Vuva Litas, yes. Vuva Litas and Elizabeth Boisson on the show. And these two wonderful women um, started an organization called Helping Parents Heal. And I was honored to meet with them when I was went to their conference or yeah, conference in Arizona about four years ago. And they're doing such important work. And they're going to tell you a little bit about their story and how they got involved in this. And today we're going to be talking about their beautiful book, which just came out, Life to Afterlife, Help, Helping Parents Heal. I am so excited about this book. I've read it. There's a lot of wonderful stories in it. So without further ado, let's let's get started. So Irene, why don't we why don't we start with you? Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Um, I'm Vice President of Helping Parents Heal. I'm the Chom conference chairperson, and I'm also an affiliate leader here in Hilton Head, Bluffton, South Carolina. Um, I was not one of the creators of Helping Parents Heal, but I came to the group in probably, I think, late 2014. My only child, my daughter, Carly Elizabeth Hughes, passed of esophageal gastric cancer at the age of 24 on February uh, 17th, 2013. So all of us that have experienced this unbelievable experience of having your child pass, um, I was thrown into just this very, very dark, deep place of grief. And quite frankly, I really didn't want to stay here on this earth. Um, my husband's first wife uh, had passed of cancer. And I tell everyone, my mantra became, Tony can't be twice widowed. And that's really what kept me on this earth. Mm -hmm. uh, I was fortunate to find Helping Parents Heal, meet Elizabeth, and you know my life changed after that. And I'll always be grateful for that. And I really just want to help people and have people see that you can heal and you can live a joy-filled, wonderful life. And uh, I'm very happy to be here. Yeah, I'm so happy to have you. And Elizabeth, tell us a little bit about yourself. I would love to. And I feel so grateful for Irene. I feel so grateful to you for having us on this show. This is wonderful. And the fact that you were at the first conference is also something that means a lot to both of us. Mm -hmm. um, my son Morgan passed at the base camp of Mount Everest in Tibet in 2009. Um, before that, my daughter Chelsea had passed uh, two days after she was born in France. Um, and I had been in the hospital on an IV for two months. And unfortunately, they weren't able to save her. And the reason that I was able to heal after she transitioned was that I got home to Morgan and he was there for me. And um, we were fortunate to have two more beautiful girls in between the time that um, we had uh, Chelsea transition and then Morgan transitioned later on. But um, Morgan transitioned at the base camp of Mount Everest in Tibet. He, he was on a university exchange program. He went with 13 other students to Tibet to be able to um, experience the culture and the economy and all of these other things that he was studying at Nanjing University while he was there. And they went up in altitude way too quickly. There were supposed to be two professors that were going with them. It ended up that there was just one Chinese tour guide who wanted to get them up the mountain as quickly as possible. And when you go up in altitude uh, too quickly, um, you can very easily get severe altitude sickness. So they made it up the mountain because the Chinese tour guide was pushing them up but they were throwing up, uh, they were urinating in the bus. All of these signs are clear signs of altitude sickness. Morgan got up there, <clears throat> took his last picture of himself in front of Mount Everest and then went to bed early because he had a terrible migraine. And the next morning they couldn't wake him up. He was foaming at the mouth. And so um, one of the boys had a 
mom who was a uh, medical doctor and she he called her and she said get him down the mountain as quickly as possible so they loaded my six foot six 280 pound uh, beautiful boy onto the bus and um, as they were going down the mountain and at the same time the director of the program was calling me and giving me Morgan's roommate's number he stopped breathing. So at that point, um, they dragged him back off the bus. They were doing CPR. And when I got Colin, his, his roommate, I spoke to Colin and I said um, that I um, was worried about Morgan and Colin told me that he didn't think that he was going to make it. And so I told Colin to put the phone up to his ear. And I told Morgan that we were proud of him, that we loved him and not to be afraid. And I felt him hug me. And I am 100% sure that that is the reason that my healing journey has been the way that it has, because I felt that hug right away. And um, I've later learned that it's a shared death experience, yes. that that's what it is called. And actually, um, William Peters is going to be publishing a book in January called uh, At Heaven's Door, and that story is in there, which makes me feel really good because Absolutely. it validated what I was feeling and it made me realize that I wasn't crazy. So I am the co-founder and president of Helping Parents Heal. I'm also a caring listener and an affiliate leader and the newsletter editor, and Irene is <laughs> also a caring listener, so she forgot to say that about herself. And we do a lot together and we love doing it. And we're really grateful to be here speaking to you about, about this and about the book. Right. And just before we move on, could you just explain a little bit about it, what a caring listener is for our listeners and in case they may want to reach out to you in that manner? Yeah. Sure, I, go ahead, Elizabeth, please. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yes. You, you created the caring listeners. <laughs> well, no, I didn't actually. It was created by Dr. Mark Pitstick, which is wonderful. Oh. And he um, believed that this was something that would be a wonderful resource for parents. Um, basically, these are parents who are shining light parents. We call ourselves shining light parents instead of bereaved parents because we believe that the light of our kids shines through us. Um, and these parents have gone down the healing path a little bit further and they reach a hand back to others to pull them forward and everything is free of charge. Everything on our website, everything that we do is free of charge, except for the conference. But the only reason that we charge for it is because the hotel charges us. <laughs> right. We try to keep it as reasonable as possible. We do have scholarships for the conference as well. But um, anyway, it, I hope that that uh, explains. Oh, the caring listeners also speak nine different languages. And so, um, and they're available in different time zones, pretty much 24 hours a day. So if people are going through a difficult time and they need someone to speak to who understands, this is a great way to reach out. They're not counselors, they're just people to listen. Right, thank you. Thank you so much for that. So in terms of um, today, I wanted to kind of take this in a different direction of some of the interviews that you've had. And this is for the world to hear, you know, this information that we're going to be talking about today. It's so profound and incredibly important for those who have had a child transition and it's also profound and incredibly important for the world to hear more evidence to show that we know that life continues. There is continuity of consciousness. And that's what a lot of this podcast is about, that I bring a lot of people on like that. So as you be started down your journey, I'd love to hear what you're like a couple of your aha moments, or maybe when you said, wow, this is, this is really true. I know my child is more alive than ever. So go ahead, Irene. Sure. First. <laughs> I, I think for a lot of us that came when we had an experience with a medium, when we had that connection to the other side, and when information was brought forward 
that could not be Googled, could not be yes. known about you. It was something that was sacred, private. Um, and I, for me, I spent a lot of time researching because I literally was consumed with the thoughts that Carly was afraid when she passed, she passed suddenly, and that she was alone when she passed. And I really set my intention that all I wanted to know was that she was okay and that someone was there for her. And I had a reading probably, I think it was about eight or nine months after she passed with George Anderson. And within a few minutes of that reading, he looked at me and he knew I had a child pass, of course, he connected with her. And he said, your daughter wants you to stop obsessing about her passing. It was as easy as walking through a doorway and your mother was there to greet her. And that just changed everything for me. It was an immediate shift in my grief journey because as a parent, what do we want? We just want to make sure our children are okay. Right. And I know she's okay. And I also know with, without a doubt that death means nothing more than the loss of one's physical body, that none of us die. Life is eternal and we will continue. And as far as I understand, there is no concept of time in the hereafter. Right. So our children saw us five minutes ago and will see us in five minutes. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. Someone explained on the show once, I, I asked a question about that. And they said, well, for those on the other side, this was a person who had, I think it was Craig Hogan, um, who actually wrote a book asking questions to those on the other side. And it's almost like waiting for someone to, you know, come for dinner or something. It's like a blink <laughs> of an eye. That's just the, that's what they used, right. the, the story they used. And I thought that that was really interesting and, and very, you know, important to hear. So Elizabeth, what about you? Of course, you had the sheer death experience, which you no, didn't quite understand, so but. Yes, I think that that was my aha moment was being able to know for sure that Morgan was not gone, that he, and as a matter of fact, I've been told by other mediums that because of the fact that Chelsea was already over there, she grabbed mm -hmm. his hand and brought him to me. So it's, it's hard to have two children in spirit or, or, you know, uh, obviously, um, but at the same time, having her over there allowed me to be able to experience this hug immediately. And I just want to say that um, I was so excited about this that I wanted to tell everybody about it. So I was looking for other bereavement support groups at the time to go there and find out about other experiences that parents were having. This was in 2009. And unfortunately, the, the bereavement support groups that I found here in the Valley didn't want anyone to talk about those signs. That wasn't something that was allowed at the time. So I, a week after Morgan passed, I started the online um, Facebook group because I wanted to connect with other parents. And then I started having meetings two months later uh, in person because I just thought that that it was something that every single parent was having, was having these connections. I was fortunate and I now realize that the reason that it happened to me so quickly was that Chelsea was already over there. Right. Um, there were a lot of other things that were going on. I was studying to be a yoga teacher trainer. So I was kind of raising my vibration at the time. And I think that that was part of it as well. Um, but I just thought, this is, this is it. This is the way that it happens when children uh, pass. And the, the more that I know, the more I realize it is actually true. But the grief that parents go through in the very beginning, and I know that Irene experienced this, I know that maybe you experienced it as well, because if you're not having a shared death experience right away, it's the most devastating thing that could ever happen to anyone in the whole wide world. But then when you realize that they're not gone and uh, that there's all this collateral beauty that they're sending you, it actually becomes almost a magical journey being with our kids on this, on this healing journey. Oh, that's beautiful, Elizabeth. So beautiful. So how did you find 
after these experiences where you just had this knowing, how did, Irene, like, how did you change as a person just walking in this life? I think it was that I realized that I could not do anything to prevent Carly's passing, her transition. So what could I do? I could choose to make a difference in the rest of this life that I do have. Mm -hmm. And if I could help a parent, um, maybe not have to experience the depth of the despair that I felt or help them come out of it, you know, that you know that rabbit hole of grief. And the goal I tell some new parents is to maybe not spend as much time in it and to be able to exit it a lot easier. And you can, you can make that choice. If you want to stay in that place for the rest of your life, that is your choice. But I know that if I would have transitioned and Carly was here, I would want her to live her life and enjoy her life and live a love-filled life. So practicing gratitude and practicing just living a joy-filled life. Mm -hmm. It's just amazing. I mean, I'm honestly, I am a happy person, you know, almost all of the time. When I first met Elizabeth, I thought, how could anyone <laughs> be that happy? <laughs> because I was in, you know, I was in such a sad place at the time. Mm -hmm. And now I feel like, oh my gosh, I'm just like Elizabeth. Isn't this wonderful? <laughs> well, it's, it's such an inspiration to the world, you know, it's so inspiring to see see you and you Elizabeth about how you can heal and be happy and find joy and celebrate mm -hmm. celebrate where our children are and which is right here also <laughs> so exactly. Elizabeth what how about you how have how has Elizabeth changed now that you have this this knowing well, I'll tell you, first of all, the kids are very, very wonderful, but they're very pushy. And so they kind of push me out of bed every morning um, when the alarm sounds, sometimes beforehand, because they love to have their tributes up on the on the Facebook page. And so we do tributes for angel dates and for birthdays, and we celebrate the kids and the parents are so kind because they put so many wonderful things underneath. But the tributes, you know, I, I like to, a lot of people say these tributes are just so great for the parents. They're, they're so important for the parents. But I truly believe, and this is something that I be believed all along, that the reason that I started that whole tribute page was for the kids because I was feeling yes. them saying, celebrate us talk about us we're still here don't let our parents forget that we're still a part of their lives and this goes for celebrations as well it goes for any type of um wedding or thanksgiving celebration or holiday celebration putting a beautiful ornament on the tree with their picture for instance or um raising a glass to them when when you're toasting in a family situation or even some people even put empty chairs with a picture of their child at the table um i know that sometimes that's hard for other family members and maybe your family is not open to that but there are so many ways that we can um, celebrate these kids and um i i just feel like they're with me all the time. They uplift mm -hmm. me all the time. When I'm hiking behind the house, I have Chelsea and Morgan hiking with me, but then I have this whole horde of a whole bunch of other kids who are also with me. And I love it because they're, they're all just wanting one thing. And that is that their parents move forward and heal and I'd, I'd say two things. And the second thing is that they build a connection with their parents. And so um, that connection, they're working just as hard on that side to, to establish, establish that connection as we are on this side. And um, this whole journey is all about love. That's all it is. And I think that Irene and I have understood that from the very beginning that all, the only reason that we're here is to help others and to learn about love. And so if we're doing that every day, 
if we are working on that every day, um, once we do see those kids, we're going to get a lot of high fives from all those kids and a lot of big hugs too. And I'm excited about that. <laughs> I had um, an interview, I'm sure you know, Peter Panagore, and he actually just aired um, last week. I've interviewed him a few times, but he talks about how during his near-death experience, how the only only question he was asked while he was on the other side was, how did you love? How did you treat others? And that lives in my heart every day. So, so important. That's so beautiful. if you were raising a young child now, or you think that, um, thinking about when you were a young child, and do you think that, of course, when when a loved one passes, when a child transitions, um, we're human. We have to go through the grief. There's no way getting around that. But do you feel now that you know all that you do, if you grew up with a family, a community that, let's say, a, a beloved pet passed, and you had a grandpa that was saying, you know, love you know, no one ever, we don't even use the word dies. No one that it, they go on forever. And we're, let's look for signs and synchronicities and do some rituals together and share in the memories. And do you feel like that that would, that would just make this journey a little bit easier, not only for those of us who have had one transition, but also for the for the other children in the family or in the world? How do you think that might change humanity? Well, I think it, I think it definitely would. And having been raised um, in an organized religion, I was brought up Catholic. Um, I was taught there was heaven and hell and purgatory and that right. was basically it. So I grew up in fear exactly. and it wasn't until I was able to have my own ideas and feel really feel that that organized religion just didn't resonate with me and it didn't feel right for me and I didn't raise Catholic uh, Carly in in religion and yet she went to a Jesuit school and loved the rituals of Catholicism but I think if we could teach about life and death to children and that death means the passing of a physical body and that life is eternal and it's the next adventure and we bring our loved ones that are no longer here, we make them a part of our life all the time. I'm very fortunate to be a bonus grandparent to five grandchildren. And we talk um, only one new Carly and the other four, we talk about Aunt Carly all the time and how she is their guardian angel. And we look at her picture and talk about her. And we talk about her at holidays. And I do the same thing with all my loved ones that have passed. We have to make those that are residing in spirit a part of our life on a regular basis. And that helps other people feel comfortable because so many people I've found are not comfortable talking about our children and talking about our loved ones that have passed. So we owe it to them and to the world to include our children and our loved ones and make it easier to keep them as part of the family always. Right. And I just envision little ones because when when someone does transition they're just hidden away from it you know and there is so much fear and so much now that's in western civilization of course we can learn a lot from our indigenous cultures and yes, and we were talking about Ethiopia earlier um, you know the, the rituals and the ceremonies and shamanism and all of that beautiful stuff we can learn so much from them and I think that's one transformation that's happening in the world is that people are really reaching out to that ancient wisdom and knowing that you know they did something right so Miss so Elizabeth what do you feel how do you feel about that would you like to weigh in well, I'd love to. As a matter of fact, um, we have lots and lots of dogs. We have five right now, but we had to <laughs> transition uh, right soon after Morgan passed. And 
it was always so wonderful for me to be able to tell my daughters, oh my gosh, Luna is going to be with Morgan now. What a great, what a great um, celebration they're having up there right now. And then Portos is, is now with Morgan. And, and, you know, I think that it goes the same for any family member. Um, I, we all have family members who have transitioned. So with a young child being able to tell that child, oh my gosh, they must be having such an incredible celebration together. Aunt Jean and Grandma uh, Martha, for instance. <laughs> I mean, all of those things are really important to talk about because it's true, they are having an incredible celebration. They're having so much fun together. And secondly, our animals are going exactly the same place they were yes. going. They are yes. not going any place else. And that is something that I think kids really worry about as well. Where is my beautiful, beloved um, dachshund going when they transition? I've heard that they don't go to heaven. They do, all, all of, everyone goes to heaven. So, yes. um, Anyway, but that is a good question. And I think that it is something that we need to be letting kids know at a very young age right now. Um, so I don't have any bonus grandkids or grandkids yet, but I yes. know that I'll be a huge advocate for that once I, <laughs> once right. I do. <laughs> right, me too, me too. <laughs> so let's talk about this beautiful book of yours, Life to Afterlife. And I know this came about, first there was the documentary by Craig McMahon, I think that's how you pronounce his name. And so tell us a little bit about your book, how it came about and, and how, how it can help, help the world. Well, it, Craig McMahon did this documentary and it was wonderful because he chose 17 members of Helping Parents Heal who um, are mostly here in the area, uh, but, but Irene flew in from South Carolina to be in the documentary as well. The documentary reached a much greater um, audience than we ever imagined that it would. And uh, for instance, on YouTube, I believe there are 300,000 views and all of, the, all of the feedback is positive. Um, it was a documentary that did talk about how we all, uh, we all have had a child pass and how we were able to move forward and heal, but it didn't really go into some of the more amazing signs that we got. Um, because even though Craig got those on tape, he didn't want to put them in this first documentary and make people think that we might be just a little bit cuckoo, which is really kind of him to do. But I think that we're evolving. I think that this whole uh, afterlife um, connection with our kids uh, is, is becoming easier and easier to talk about. And so um, I was in an interview with Jamie Clark and with Maggie Clark and Jamie brought Morgan through before the interview started. And Morgan said, and this was July 21st of this year, mom, you're going to write a book about that documentary. You know that, don't you? And Jamie said that to me and I said, oh, well, that's a good idea. But no, I didn't know that. And so the next day I got on the phone, actually, I sent an email to all of the 17 parents who are a part of it, as well as to some of the people, uh, uh, Suzanne Giesman and Maureen Hancock, who were actually um, in it as well as to Craig to see if everybody would be willing to write a chapter and everybody did it. And we got it done in less than two months, which is pretty wow. amazing, which kind of shows you that the kids were helping. Yes, yes, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> yes, Mar Marla, it was very interesting when Elizabeth called me and told me that uh, we were gonna be writing a book. And I said, <laughs> oh, great, and that too, or daily repertoire. you know the, the work we're doing <laughs> yes. we all of the 20,000 members we have so, <laughs> caring listeners we have everything affiliate and let's write a book too <laughs> <laughs> but you know the the beautiful thing about first of all the documentary documentary is amazing and along with that not helping parents heal but um 
the surviving death documentary that's just on netflix that series mm -hmm. is it's the information is so getting so getting out there but all the stories in the books in the book the stories are just so heartfelt and touching and talking about the signs and the synchronicities and and the healing the beautiful beautiful healing so Irene what would you like to um just share your thoughts on on the book um well being a part of the documentary was it was just amazing and it yeah. was such an honor and I think you know that when you're with people who have experienced the same thing that you have experienced you know that camaraderie and that love is just so heartfelt and it was just so wonderful to be with everyone I mean, these people are like my best friends, you know, there are people that I could reach out to any time of the day or night and, and just be able to speak with them. So it was an honor. And when Elizabeth talked about the book, I actually got up one night, it was very late at night and I sat down and I called on Carly and I asked her for help because I was a little bit stressed out thinking about writing and I wrote for hours and it was done. So it was a wonderful, yeah. wonderful experience to feel her right there with me, right. just hands on the keyboard and words just flowing. So yeah. it was, it was just beautiful. And again, to share my experience and to hopefully help someone else. And that's what it's all about. Right. Definitely. Well, it's, it's a beautiful book and I'm so so happy that you wrote it and I'm sure there'll be a few more coming up but we'll, we'll see about that it is really interesting though I've experienced that where you can just sit down and you quiet your mind and my listeners have heard this many many times but how you can call it downloading you can call it channeling you can call it feeling with your heart you can call it what you want and once again how beautiful to do if you have a young one right next to you right <laughs> a young one in physical form because of course you're <laughs> the children who have transitioned are right there but it just flows through you and the more you trust that and feel that it's so important to share with the world and that's exactly what you've done so i i think i would love to share a story very quickly i would just, love i was going to ask you to well, <laughs> we just interviewed a, a a book that just came out recently and it's called the beauty of a grieving mother and the the author is one of our affiliate leaders and she also is a caring listener in russian but she um her name is ellie Shaket. she has uh, Ramona, who is from Romania, and Claudia, who is from Romania, who both also wrote chapters for it. And all three of them didn't even know if they could uh, write in their native language in Russian, Romanian, and all these other, they've never even tried. And they wrote beautiful chapters in English. And Claudia was saying on the interview, I look back at these chapters and I'm thinking, did I write that? I don't remember writing that, which is just wow. so wonderful. So obviously it is divinely guided that our kids yes. are helping us. And it's, it's so beautiful to be able to do that. I wanted to just really quickly also say about the book that every penny that's earned from the book goes back to helping parents heal because this is a group effort and we're trying really hard to be able to use this as a way to um, raise conference money for the uh, scholarship money for the conference, as well as any other types of uh, things that are going into the goodie bags and, and other stuff like that, t-shirts and all of that other stuff. So um, if, if people do purchase this, they should feel good about where the money is going to because it's going back to help more parents heal, which is very important. And I just, I'm so excited that it's done because <laughs> I bet you are. <laughs> well, well, Irene and I have been told over and over again that we're going to write a book and every medium says, you know, you have a book that you're writing and right. it's like, oh, we have a lot of time to do that. <laughs> I definitely know how that feels, <laughs> but it's, it's so exciting. 
So I'd like to ask you, we'll start with you, Elizabeth. If you could take a walk with your five-year-old self, what would you say? Oh, goodness. I would tell my five-year-old self that it doesn't have to be as serious as we think it needs to be in the beginning. And I would tell my five-year-old self, remember that this journey is all about love. I was so driven when I was younger. I had to always get the best notes. I always had to be the best student in the class. But I think that being the best should be being the most compassionate, being the most loving, being the most, the, the friend who's there to listen the most as well. And I also, I also think that it's important for us to be able to tell kids that we don't die. It's, it's just a, um, it's a different, um, it's like going through a curtain and arriving on it on the other side, but the loved ones that are in spirit are still right here with us. They're helping us. They are, um, they're allowing us to move forward and they are our biggest cheerleaders. So all of the grandparents who might pass, all of the aunts and uncles, they're still with us and they're still helping us. So that's what I would tell my five-year-old self, I think. <laughs> Thank you. Beautiful. And Irene, what about you? I think I would say, buckle up. It's going to be a wild ride. <laughs> 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 but you can do it. You can do it. And you can do it with, uh, with love, with grace, and with compassion. Beautiful. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, it, we need to wrap it up, but is there any, would, would either of you like to mention the conference or your speakers, or you have an amazing conference coming up in August? And would you like to share a little bit about that? Sure. I'll just talk a little bit. And Elizabeth's very good about remembering all the speakers. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's going to be August 18th to the 22nd at the Sheridan Wild Horse Pass in Arizona. Um, in, I think registration has been open six weeks now, I believe, and we have 770 people registered. Mm -hmm. So we have probably about a hundred slots left and it's just gonna be an amazing, an amazing celebration of our children. And uh, we're really looking forward to it. So Elizabeth, you take it from there. Well, I'd love to. I'll just tell a little bit about the keynote speakers that we have. So we have David Kessler, Paul Denniston, who's going to be teaching Yoga for Healing Grief, Suzanne Giesman, uh, Dr. Mary Neal, as we talked about, Dr. Jeff O'Driscoll, Jeffrey Olson, uh, Mark Anthony, Ann Albers, Julie Ryan, Dr. Gary Schwartz, and Gordon Smith, um, who is coming all the way from Scotland. Those are just our keynote speakers. We have so many other uh, presenters who are going to be there as well, including a lot of different mediums who are going to be available to be able to do readings during the conference, but at a separate kind of thing, separate price. We have sound healers who are going to be coming mm -hmm. We have teachers who are going to be teaching us how to connect with our uh, children in spirit. Um, we have energy healers as well. Craig McMahon will be there to talk a little bit more about the documentary and tell a little bit more about what he's doing as well. Um, we have people who talk about stories of forgiveness like Ernie Jackson. I love that story. We have people, uh, well, we just, Brian Smith, who is, an incredible speaker about what heaven is like as well. Um, he just recently spoke to both of our groups, um, Levon Sandberg, we, third, Christine Salter, the, Julie Ryan, David Router, Tina Powers, there's just so many people. But it's possible to find out about all of the speakers by going on to the resources page of our website and then clicking on 2022 pre presenters. So you'll be able to actually find out bios uh, for each of these people as well. So um, thanks for asking. Wonderful. And if people would like to reach out to you, to both of you, how would they find you? Easily. We're both caring listeners. So our phone numbers are on there and our emails are on there. And on the we website. Called, 
all the time on the website, yes. which is www.helpingparentsheal.org. So um, yes, we love talking to parents. And um, I think that being able to talk to like-minded people is one of the best ways to move forward and heal. And so um, we're available. Wonderful. We have a very active Facebook group. We have over 20, just about 20,000 members. Yes. So, and, you know, we have affiliate groups all around the world. So there's a time zone, no matter 24 hours a day, you can connect with someone on Facebook. Wonderful. Yes, actually, we probably should say we have affiliate groups in now Mexico as well, but in um, in the United States, in Canada, in the UK, in South America, in India, and also in New Zealand and Australia. So those are the physical places, but we also have um, parents from all over the world who are a part of Helping Parents Heal, and we're very grateful for that. It must be amazing just to think back when it started and where where it's gone now. If you could have only listened to this interview, like how many years ago? <laughs> well, thank you so much. It has been an honor. You two ladies are just full of love and light and you're spreading oh. it into the world as are your children and I just, I, I just love both of you. I'm so honored mm -hmm. to know you. And I, I can't wait to see you at that conference in August. Great. Thank oh, you so much for having us. And we feel the same it. way. Thank yeah. you for your podcast okay. and for this spreading, spreading the word. And well, you got, well, I can't cool. wait to see you in August. <laughs> <laughs> so have, have a great rest of the day. Yes, you too. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye everyone.